Hello world, my name is David Oze and in this channel we talk about how to create and integrate APIs so you can improve your existing projects. Today we will take a look at dummy JSON, which is a very easy to use uh, API and we will also discuss two major API tools when it comes to interacting with an API. The first one will be the browser and the second one will be Postman. So the first thing to do when interacting with an API is to check the documentation. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's get into it. Dummy JSON can be used with any type of front-end project that needs products, cards, user, to-dos, or any dummy data in JSON format. On the right side here, we will have the list of all the data we can interact with. And this is the data we'll be more interested in in this video. But before that, let's take a look at what we have here. We can actually test a route in order to check if the API works. And when testing this route, we can make any of the get, post, put, patch, or delete requests. And the response that we should expect should be uh, this uh, status, OK, and then method get. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to copy this URL here and paste it inside the browser by opening a new tab. But one thing I would like to mention is that when we make a request in the browser, when we insert a URL, the browser by default will make a GET request. So in the URL section here, the browser can only make GET requests. A POST request can occur when submitting a form, for example. But in this case, we're just going to make a GET request. So let's take a look at this request um, inside the console. So I can just right click and then click on inspect and choose network. I may also need to refresh the page. Then I have this test here, which is the endpoint that we are you know, using to make this request when clicking on it. We have the headers here with some general information. So in the request URL, we have exactly the URL that we have inserted. We have the method get, as I said. This is the method that we have by default when inserting a URL in the browser. We have the status code that we discussed in the previous video, which is here not modified. And we have some additional information here, which are inside the request headers and response headers. Apart from this, we have the preview where we can see exactly the response that we have, uh, the response as well, choose the response. Initiator is going to be the HTML tag um, responsible of this request or for this request. We have the timing, we have the cookies. So these are the basic information that we can have when making a guest, uh, get request on the browser. But if we want to do some more, if we want to have more flexibility uh, when you know working with APIs, we may need some additional tool than the browser. That's why we need something like Postman, where we can you know interact with our API in a very um, easy way, I must say, and which gives us more flexibility. So let's jump into Postman to understand how it works. In Postman, the first thing that we need to do is to create a new collection. And when creating a new collection, we can simply click on the plus, then, uh, you know, a rest API basics that's going to create a folder having all the basic requests that we need to make when interacting with an API. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And we have all the requests here, all the files which are already pre created for us. And if I click on get here, I'm going to create a new tab here. I can get rid of this. And this is where we're going to insert our endpoints. This is where we're going to choose the type of request we want to make. This is where we can, you know, uh, insert some headers, information, the body, uh, authorization in case of any token that we need to mention before uh, sending the request. So these are major tabs that we will be interested in when uh, working with APIs on Postman. And we may need to try the same request here. So I'm going to get back to this tab, copy this endpoint, and just paste it in here. 
and just send making sure that this is a get request there we go we have our status 200 okay which means the request was successful and then we have exactly the same response buddy so this is quite a basic uh, api it's a basic endpoint returning some basic data so what if we have we need to have some you know list of users for example in this case going back to the documentation we can click on users and have you know uh, this endpoint for example here where we can fetch all the list of users inside this dummy JSON server so do not forget that do not forget that when we work with apis we interact with some type of servers uh you know connected to a database having some data so when we make requests we're actually requesting the api the server to go into the database and you know fetch some data and return it to us in response so by pasting this link here we will request for the list of users and let's send the request there we go we have an array having a long list of users and the good news is that they are well organized with an id which can help to you know fetch a particular user and that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to fetch one single user and in the documentation we are provided with this um the functionality or should i say this power and by copying this endpoint we can simply you know add a slash one to say okay go into the the database and fetch the user having the id one so it's still the same endpoint all we need to do is to add the slash one which is a parameter to specify the the id of the requested user back to postman i'm gonna add slash two and there we go we have our id or should i say our user with the id 2 and all the related information of the user so that's how we can make a basic get request so how the how do we make a post request for example and other type of request so that's what we're going to see next going back to the documentation I want us to check out this login user and get token, which is very important when creating an API. It's, you know, it's really important to set up an authentication system when you create your own API so that your users can, you know, uh, authenticate themselves, generate some token and securely access your API. So every time they will be making requests to your API, they can simply provide the their token and your api is going to recognize the 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 user you know and just serve the data to authenticated users like to users who are registered into your api to users who um, have the right you know to request for data to your server you know that's almost the the necessity of setting this uh, authentication system so this is what we're going to simulate here so let's suppose that we need to authenticate ourselves before we have access to data to this dummy json and to do that we need to uh, use this endpoint here we need to authenticate ourselves and this is exactly what happens in production you cannot just uh, request for data without being authenticated it's really really important to get authenticated first to an api before you know um, having access to data you need to specify some type of token so that your api provider will know your identity and serve the data that you are requesting so this is what we will be doing here we will send a post request and in the headers we need to specify the content type which will be application json and if we check inside postman here this is an information we already have it's an information which is already mentioned here so no need to mention that again so we can skip that and go to buddy and inside buddy we need to specify the username and password so i'm just going to copy this so it's a json we need to say uh, username and then inside 
the value here we need to provide the username which is provided to us so in this case we don't uh, we cannot set our own values because this is just um, you know uh, an API for testing purpose but in case you're using a real API then you may have the flexibility to provide you know real um, credentials and in this case I'm just gonna paste the same password and then sign the request and boom we have our 200 okay and the user is well authenticated and you can see down the response here we have the token which is provided to us this is the token this is the key that we use we, we need to use in order to have access to the API in order to allow the uh, communication with the API so I'm just gonna copy this key and then simulate again we are just simulating what happens in production we need some kind of token that we need to provide in all our requests so how do we provide this token in order to secure our request so this is something I'm going to do and uh, go back to the get here get file and I'm going to make a get request and this is where I need to specify my token inside the authorization tab and it should be a bearer token I'm just gonna choose bearer token and then paste the token inside here so how do I know that this is a bearer token simply by going back into the documentation to get the current authenticated user we need to specify the bearer token inside the authorization so this is how I know I am not guessing anything here I'm just following the instructions of the API documentation so after providing the bearer token we can make a get request then uh, use this endpoint in order to have the information of the authenticated user so let's place the endpoint right in here and I'm going to send this request there we go we have exactly the authenticated user so the question now is how did the server know that this is uh, the user or you know let's suppose we are Emily Johnson Smith uh, user so let, how did the server know that okay this is Johnson I need to grant Johnson access to the API simply because the token here holds some information about the authenticated user so every time a user is authenticated all they need to do is to provide the token and the server is going to recognize their identity so this is something you can set up you know in your system when creating your api always authenticate the user you create some kind of endpoint like this which can verify uh, the the identity of the the user and then the you know you can grant the user access to you know all the endpoints or all the other points of the uh, all the other endpoints of your api so back to the API, we're going to try some put and delete requests. Down the page here, we have, um, if we scroll down again, we have update a user. Yes, we can use this endpoint here to update the user with the ID number two. And again, in the headers, we have to mention some content type, which is already specified in Postman. We may also need to mention inside the body the last name first name or any information that we want to update and that will be it in order to make this put request so back to postman put request so i need to make sure that this is exactly a put request i can then paste my endpoint inside the body i need to specify here the last name this way and I'm just gonna provide updated name as the value updated name and send the request and as we can see here in the last name we have updated name so this is how we can simply make a put request and let's try a delete request and see how it works so with the delete request all we need to do is to use this endpoint again it's the same endpoint just that again we just need to mention the id of the user okay just like in the previous example and then the method is going to be delete so let's copy this endpoint and then return to postman to make this delete request and 
this is all we need to do then click on send and as a response we're going to have exactly the details of the deleted user so that's how it works and when working with postman sometimes you can have many files here on the left so it's always good to name your files let's say here delete a user for example and you can also save your request so that the next time you come everything is just you know ready to go and uh, well saved so that being said that's all for me and i'll see you in the next one